So wait a minute. You're telling me the most beautiful cichlid in the world doesn't come from Central or South America? Not Honduras? Nicaragua? Even Mexico? You're telling me the most beautiful cichlid in the world came from Madagascar? That little tiny island off the coast of Africa? Oh my God, this changes everything. All right, guys, let's talk about it. The Paratilapia pollinae. Let's go. In the evening hours, on a clear summer night, you can look up into the heavens and find a galaxy of stars. Look closely at the pollinae cichlid and you will understand why it's called the Starry Night Cichlid. What's up guys? It's your boy Scott from King Queen Cichlids bringing you yet another new video. Are you ready for a new video? Yeah! I know I am. But before we get started, please consider hitting that subscription button, hitting that notification bell so that you know every time I upload a new video or go on live Sunday nights at 8 with Liz. Give me a thumbs up on your way out or leave a comment below letting me know what you didn't enjoy so I know what I can do to improve your experience at King Queen Cichlids. Now I am so excited today to talk about one of my favorite cichlids, the most beautiful cichlid in the world, the Paratilapia pollinae. Now this is the one African cichlid that I allow in my fish room. I have a no African cichlid allowed uh, quota on my fish room. Nothing but Central and South America. But this Polynai cichlid is so similar to those Central and South American cichlids and so beautiful too, I had to make an exception for this particular cichlid. So let's get involved, let's talk about, let's get some information, let's share some stuff about this incredible cichlid. So let's dig into it and talk about this beautiful fish. Now number one, I did a lot of research uh, when it came to the Paratilapia pollinae. I looked on YouTube to see what was out there and most of the videos are just the fish with not a lot of commentary where the commentary basically is someone repeating exactly what Wikipedia says. I have gone above and beyond that. I have talked to Dr. Paul Lazell, I've talked to Jim Cummings, two of the foremost people who know about Madagascar cichlids, uh, the past, the current, and their future status. So I went to the top of the top to get this information. I also used the Cichlid Companion Room, which is the world's largest cichlid database run by Juan Miguel. So basically what I'm talking about uh, is the correct information. I even have a couple of quotes from Jim Cummings just to make sure that my information is as accurate as possible. Now these guys get to about 12 inches long. Jim Cummings said he's had one live as long as 13 years. They're beautiful black fish with speckles, white, gold, and blue speckles. The saying black is beautiful is very prevalent when it comes to this particular fish because it is absolutely beautiful. The definitive example of a large spot form, but not a bleaker eye. I talked to Dr. Paul Lazell. He admitted that he's probably the person that caused all the confusion when it came to three different species of Paratilapia pollinae. There was the Bleakeri, the Pollinae, and the Andapa. Uh, but according to Jim Cummings, his feeling is the Andapa is only the true species that looks very different than the Bleakeri and the Pollinae. The Andapa is the true large spot uh, Paratilapia and he does believe there's a difference. He has no problem, and we're talking about Jim Cummings, with the bleaker eye and the pollen eye being grouped together as one genius of cichlids. Jim says, start with a group of at least four, six is better, in a large tank. The bigger, the better. He said he's never had success keeping them in pairs. They can be shy or retiring that way or usually the male will beat up the female. Sexual dimorphosis shows a relatively small size, males four inches, females three inches, and young fish breed more frequently. 
the older your pair gets, the less likely they are going to breed, which may be my problem currently because I've had these guys over two years. Uh, the male is maxing out at about eight to nine inches right now, so he's getting up in age, and the females are right around five inches. So uh, this might be the situation that they are just too old at this point where they're not going to breed. Jim also says they do best with large, chunky structures so territories can be secure. Now I also asked him a question about my trio of uh, Peritilopia pollinii because I was thinking if I pull one of the females out, maybe that will help pair the male and the female together. This is what he thought. He says, Scott, that could be tricky. The extra female might be keeping harmony between the pair. If you pull her, the pair may lose their compatibility. Then again, they may not. I had it both ways, but with these set up in a pair-only tank. He said, that's what makes Madagascar cichlids so interesting. They can be somewhat unpredictable. He says, they are very similar in many respects to the Central American cichlids and temperament and, and can usually hold their own against other Central American cichlids. The other thing that Jim says is that this fish reminds him of the Ostronatus ocelatus, better known as the Oscar cichlid, and I couldn't agree with him more. Their temperament, their personality, how they love to devour food, uh, really points to the Oscar. They're very common to the Oscar, but with a Ferrari type of body and look. They are a beautiful, fantastic looking cichlid, and uh, I think you guys will enjoy them if you pick one of these up. The other thing I want to talk about is that these fish are endangered. Now, I believe they're endangered in the wild because I know there's several fish farms, commercial fish farms out there, that breed these guys regularly. But I think in the wild, in Madagascar, these guys are very close to being extinct. They're on the red list. So it's important for all of us, if we get our hands on these fish, to try to breed them. And Jim, thank you so much for giving me this information and allowing me to share it on my video. Again, guys, you definitely want to check out Jim Cummings, uh, his videos. He's got about 1,600 subscribers, over 700 videos, most of them all, all of them are fish that are in his fish room, and a lot of them are, you know, showing them breeding and showing them uh, cohabitating with other Central American cichlids. So, again, guys, just a fantastic cichlid species. I'm calling it the most beautiful cichlid in the world because I think it's gorgeous. I, I enjoy the black and white color palette. You see me wearing a lot of black and whites throughout the the day when I, you know, go out. I, that's kind of what I like to wear. But just a fantastic cichlid. Um, and if you get your hands on them, definitely get your hands on them. Most of the time when I see them, they retail for around $30 to $40, depending on size. And as I said, and as Jim said, these guys are just like keeping Oscars. And, that, and those parameters of what you keep an Oscar in, it's probably similar to what you would keep the Polyni in. Um, large tank, do, do regular water changes because these guys are sloppy, like an Oscar, you know, they eat a lot, they're going to have food going all over the place. I like to have like a catfish or a pleco in the tank with them to kind of eat up whatever they don't get, as well as cleaning the tanks. But again guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of the Paratilapia pollinii. I wanted to bring you something straight out of my fish room. You know, again, I went on the internet, I went on YouTube, and most of the videos out there really didn't give any information at all. And what information was out there was basically scripted from what's on the internet itself. I'm glad that I had the ability to talk to a Dr. Paul Azell or, or Jim Cummings and get the very most foremost information in the world in my hands to give to you guys. So I hope you appreciate that. Uh, anything that I talk about when I do a video is going to be about cichlids that I have in my room or in my fish room. You know, I see some of these some of these videos uh, talked about the Paratilapia pollinii, but they used other people's footage, and they didn't actually have the cichlid themselves. So you will never find me talking about a cichlid that I don't have in my hand in my fish room right now. I just 
I, I won't talk about other things that I haven't uh, experienced or kept myself. That's the only way that I'm going to be able to give you the best information about it. Okay? Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, hit that subscription button, hit that notification bell, so that you know every time I upload a new video or that Liz and I go on live Sunday at 8 o'clock. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoy this video, or, or leave me a comment below if you didn't enjoy it. Let me know what you did enjoy so I can improve your experience at King Queen Cichlids. Alright guys, I really appreciate you guys checking us out this week. Liz also has a video that she put out herself. You can find Liz under Cichlid Queen. And she did a little short video about her nano tank in our kitchen. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And I think you guys will too. Hope to see everyone Sunday night at 8. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I got some surprises. Alright guys, thanks so much for viewing. Talk to you later. Enjoy this hobby for all it's worth. And keep your hands wet. Bye bye.